All right, good morning all. Thanks for hanging with me on the uh, house project. We're gonna wash Adams. This is Mycin, I think it's M-I-S-S-E-N, Mycin Blue. And if you'll remember, if you guys have been around for a while, we, uh, we polished this in a day. Uh, and then Ryan uh, Burroughs did the, uh, did the PPF. Uh, and so the car looks fantastic. It is coated in, I believe, CSL XO, XO V5. Uh, and you know, should be holding up pretty well here. Figures the freaking sun is coming right at us. What the heck? Anyway, let's wash the wheels. I've got everything set up here. I had to come out here. You know, there's a lot of dudes who use this uh, this wash bay, and so there's a lot of hands, a lot of cooks in the kitchen here. So I had to come out here early and get all set up. Actually, it wasn't too bad. So they've done a pretty decent job of keeping it uh, looking somewhat decent, and uh, Krenzel's working great. So I was worried that I'd come out here and all my stuff was missing, but. Got to give the uh, the, uh, the uh, LZ LZ crew credit. They're not so great at the uh, organization stuff when it comes to uh, car washing equipment. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, you remember what wheel coating? Did we do Deluxe Gliss on this? So, yeah. yeah, so that's Deluxe Gliss. Great combo. I've been. Uh, you know, of course, we made the transition to armor wheel coating because it's a single coat. The wheels, I could probably just use regular old, I certainly could just use regular old soap on it, but do brake buster as normal. I also went over to the compound garage and I got fresh, uh, fresh foam cannons. So I got everything organized. I got a couple of fresh Griot's foam cannons. So we should have everything we need to do a good job here today. So, Really good news. I'll talk about it here shortly. I think uh, maybe next week uh, our built hamburger pre order is going to go up. And what I'm thinking about doing, I haven't got permission from Pete to do this yet, but uh, what I want to do is air freight in a signature edition. Uh oh. Meaning uh, me and Pete will sign. I'll have him sign all the bottles. I'm going to do a hundred of each as a. Uh, Kind of a, comm a commemoration, is that what say? Gosh, my word's not working for me today. Uh, to commemorate our, uh, our, what I think is gonna be a long and fruitful partnership here, of us uh, being the uh, US exclusive distribution and US and Canada, US exclusive distributor for Built Hamber products here in the US. And uh, with the good news, we'll talk about this in a minute when we, when we actually do the touchless on here. The new touchless is gonna is freaking sick. You saw it on. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch uh, John, forensic detailing channel, and uh, he he launches it and talks about it. Shows how different it is. Um, but basically, it's it, for us. It's gonna be about eight times concentration. So. Anyway, that's coming. So I'm working on maybe doing a hundred. It'll be a hundred of Traceless, a hundred of Atomac, and a hundred of, these tires are pretty clean, so I'm just gonna roll with the foam cannon. I'm not go with the sprayer. A um, hundred, uh, uh, yeah, a hundred of Touchless, the new Touchless, old Touchless that won't exist. Man, I hope someday, I get like four million followers and then I just have like experts come and do, do stuff for me. <laughs> that would be cool. I don't know that I would let anybody though. Adam's much more uh, willing than I probably would be. So let's see, what do we have left to do on the project? So Mike's start working on baseboards or you know, continuing baseboard work today. I bet you he'll get a big chunk of that done. We have to finish uh, mounting a couple of things in the upstairs bathroom, which I think he's doing right this minute. So we have to mount the uh, shower glass and then the mirror. So when that's done, that bathroom is done. Uh, we did uh, finished all of the uh, all the lighting outlets. So uh, my project today, Adam's going to come over this afternoon. I've just got to get before I set up the whole Lutron system. One thing I've never done is transferred it to somebody else. Uh, and so I had to go into pro mode or installer mode. But I want to be sure before I spend you know, three hours, four hours 
programming and setting it all up and organizing it, I want to make sure I can transfer it seamlessly and not have to redo it all. So that's my main task here today. Uh, the home theater is all done and set up, so all my, all my mistakes, which was only one, um, which was the size of the speakers. Good news is I was able to sell off the speakers in a few minutes. Those speakers are really freaking good. If you, uh, if you like how they look, uh, and this, the videos are coming out this, you know, this weekend, this week, uh, if you like how those look and you want to get the set, you know, I'm a dealer for them, I just don't have them up in the store. Man, this is the this is the kind of washing I like to do. I gotta you know wash the cars that I you know take care of. Trevor maintains this, so there's uh this is this is this is my kind of washing. Yeah, I think um, so. Victor's working on the tile, so he's uh, actually I think he's done until the countertops come right. He's not coming back today. So Monday, windows, countertops, uh, cladding, stair rail. So next, next week, all the stuff should be coming together. The key to maintaining carbon ceramics is just this, getting the carbon ceramic dust out, and then they won't squeak generally, and they work great. Let's do, uh, he has the same uh, exhaust I have, which is the Dundon Titanium Center and on the headers. I don't think, do we need some P21S? I don't think we do. Let's just clean it up here and see what happens. Every time I clean the exhaust, I always think about the psychopath that I had in the comments. This was a long time ago. Every, every single video, I eventually had to block him because he got so annoying. He would like post it 50 times in every video about blowing water up into the engine through the exhaust. <laughs> like by just doing that. <laughs> I always find it so funny until eventually I'm like, dude, enough. So just as a refresher, if you're, if we, yeah, these don't need to be cleaned. And special, but as a refresher, the, the maintenance plan for your exhaust tips, first thing you should do, Dr. Beasley's. So do some Dr. Beasley's a metal coat. It's a high temperature coating for metal. Then normal maintenance would be to use P21S polishing soap. If you ever got to the point to where that was, you know, the polishing soap was too much, uh, I actually found that the P21S doesn't even remove doesn't remove the, the Dr. Beasley's. But maybe once every six months, just slop a little Dr. Beasley's on there. All it is is a wipe on, wipe off. It takes two seconds. Then, uh, if you ever needed it, you would use uh, what's a metallic cut. So you would use CarPro's uh, metal cleaner. You could use Mother's, any sort of metal cleaner, and just if, if it got really built up. But if you use P21S every three, four months or so, then you should never have to do anything. These look good, so I don't have to do anything at all other than just the normal maintenance, normal cleanup that we just did there. Yeah, so I mean, realistically, we're gonna be done here on, I think what will happen is we'll probably be done here at the end of next week and then we'll probably have to come back three or four times, you know, just to shoot very specific wrap-up videos and that sort of thing. And then the biggest project is doing the, you know, building a house in 10 minutes type video, putting it all together in uh, a couple of summary videos, which would be behind the scenes. But we got a lot of work to do a lot of capturing at the end of the project to really maximize the value. So we gotta get it done. And then we gotta go and take photos and Matterport and do all the stuff. So, and then right after that, we're going into Lena's kitchen and kind of in between doing, Lena is my, uh, my neighbor, or actually Lena is a neighbor, 
but she is the one who bought my old Woodgate house. And so she talked me into doing an outdoor kitchen. So I said, all right, we'll do it, but I've got to be able to video it. While we're doing that, we still haven't moved into the new building. Freaking kind of unbelievable. So we're waiting on one last sticker on the stupid uh, fire suppression system that we don't even need. Like, but it's there, so you gotta get it stickered. I'm like, gee whiz, man. Got this building. I'm paying rent in my other building. I'm ready to freaking move out. You idiots are killing me. Yeah. This is why we do all that work to the car and then you maintain it so that it makes this washing experience easy and enjoyable. It's so funny. I feel like being here the first, you know, it was so dreary and rainy and gross. And then when we got out of the gross part of the job and we're into the fun part, it's like the sun has been, the sky's parted. It's been beautiful ever since. But the first few, whatever weeks, first few months was, it's kind of how my brain felt. But today we're doing a, uh, a live stream with, uh, with Colette. And so I'm gonna get her to tell her origin story. We did uh, Adam last week, live on the podcast. So if you go to the live section, of the YouTube channel, you can go back and rewatch it because you know, by the time this video is up, that, that would have already happened. But I suspect it'll probably be a pretty good conversation. I don't know her story, so it'll be fun to ask her. Like when I'm asking Adam, I already know the darn story, so it's kind of not as fun when you're, I, I, you know, I want to be the, the person that's learning as well at the same time. Instead of just an interview where I get to actually sit back and listen. first few washes to get everything set up and get everything working. I actually really like this seat. It's pretty comfy. It's not quite a Viper chair, but this is like an old school, one of Rio's old school products. I haven't had anybody yell at me for throwing away all the crap in the wash bay. Adam was like, ooh, I don't know. Someone might get mad. I said, yeah, well, I'll send them my way. No one came my way, so maybe, maybe somebody did get mad, but I ain't scared. This is why we live in Central Florida. It's like 70, 68 degrees, no humidity right now, or very little humidity, it's beautiful. All right, it's time to build the hamber. Time to uh, pre-wash. You can see the bugs all over the front. This car is where you yell at me about air washing a clean car. Well, it's not clean. Look at all those bugs. It's dirty. It's just not muddy. So you gotta get all the uh, nighttime bugs, swamp bugs. That's, um, that's probably 100 miles an hour down a uh, bug swamp road. <laughs> that's what you're looking at there. So we're gonna do a pre-wash and that's the product we have coming and uh, the good news. So the original gallons we were bringing over or five liters, the plan was to bring over the five liter and the one liter. And I think it was gonna be like 30, 38 bucks. <laughs> you know, Pete is really adamant about his product line needs to be affordable, re reasonable, realistic. The problem we have is we have to bring it over from, you know, from, we have to bring it over across the, across the uh, ocean. Uh, and so it does, you know, cost quite a bit to do that. So, um, you know, we had to add, the, I think it ended up being like a dollar, a dollar 60 or something. Cause I think it, it sold there for, 
I don't know, 22 or 23 pounds or something like that after you do the conversion. I think it came to like 30, $33 and change. And then because of the container costs, the shipment costs, uh, duties and taxes, we had to add like a buck 20 or something. So it was like $35. Well, the new formula, I think, is going to settle in around 55 So it's not double the price, but it's more than double the concentration if we use it the way, you know, he's designed it. Instead of 50-50, and we'll, we'll, we'll calculate all this stuff for you, make it easy for you for your Krenzlas and your, your ARs, and I'll have Tommy and Nick um, create a spreadsheet, and we'll have it on the product page just to make it simpler for you. If you have a 1.1 orifice or a, or a you know 1.25 orifice or 1.5 like some of my big pressure washer setups uh, so you know you're looking at probably maybe a little bit more soap than we put GSF so maybe 200 milliliters in a, in a one liter container um, and so you know we're using less than half of the product and so it's going to be more expensive but it's you're going to get instead of maybe 10 12 washes out of uh, a gallon, you're gonna get 40, 50, 60 washes. Uh, and so the concentration or the product is very, very different. But the concept here is, the concept is about uh, getting the product on the car, And then it's doing the cleaning. Now the water here is super hard, so I'm not getting the foam I want. So anyway, the plan is to pre-order. So we're gonna do, I think, hopefully a launch edition of like 100 of each, and then we'll do start a pre-order. We're bringing four products over to start. Atomac, clay bar, um, the, so the three, three clay bar types. The Traceless, which is the new window cleaner, a glass cleaner, and um, Touchless. And then over the course of the next you know, nine, 10 months, we'll have the entire line of built hammer. Now, the entire line of built hammer is not gonna be on the Obsessed Garage website. Only the stuff that I'm using, only the stuff that I love, only the stuff that uh, fits in my process goes on the Obsessed Garage website. But the built hammer website, when you go to builthammer.com, you're gonna be able to buy whatever you want. The whole built hammer line, we're gonna have it all stocked, already and available here. And, uh, and then, so you'll order it. It'll know you're in the US and uh, we're gonna ship it out OGHQ. It's gonna be great. So the entire line will be available over the course of the next 10 months. And we'll make sure you know when it's available. And that will also be available. So if you're a uh, retailer and you're watching this and you're interested, I'm gonna be very strategic about this, but I'm gonna choose you know, about a dozen retailers that provide value to us in the detailing space. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll, you know, I'll just, I'm the distributor for it and um, the retailers will be able to um, sell it as well. All of the products. You know, I just believe that exclusivity on products is a mistake from a business perspective. Um, but the problem I've struggled with is making a market for products and then not, you know, not getting the credit for it. And then oftentimes make a market in the product and then the product takes off and I can't even get any of it because they're out of stock because they're selling it to everybody else. And so now you got to come through me to get it. That's what I'm working on doing for most things. If I'm going to put all of my energy and effort behind it, then I'm going to you'll support the product and, 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 and distribute the product to everybody. All right. Let's it off.
I always go bottom up when I'm doing a rinseless. So anyway, stage or not a rinseless, a uh, pre-wash. Anyway, stay tuned on the website. We'll, I'm sure we'll announce it on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube uh, when the pre-order goes up. For whether you want the signature edition or you want uh, just the regular stuff. So we're probably, uh, if I can convince Pete to do the signature edition, then you know we're looking at you know weeks to delivery. If uh, you know if we're doing going to do the other, it's probably six six seven weeks to delivery from from your pre-orders. You know as long as it takes our container to get across the the ocean. And so I've been noticing uh, they uh, on the YouTube channel now. For those of you who are bought in, you don't have to protect me here. You don't have to tell me to, you know, don't ignore the haters. So think about, you know, haters, especially now, as long as, long as I've been doing this, they don't get to me. <laughs> I, find it, I find it funny most of the time. But I do like to acknowledge feedback. It's pretty cool. About 50% of the bugs come off with the pre-wash. Oh, they're another 50% of that off or 60-75% of that off with the uh, with the contact wash and then the remaining will get if there are any left which there probably won't be in the uh, drying drying phase so anyway the uh, the current theme which I find so funny <laughs> two things one I hate Matt so you know how could anybody like Matt so I have like um, four amazing humans. I've got Trevor, Mike, Mike, and Andrea here. I think you guys like me. Everybody likes me, right? I'm fun to be around. I'm a nice guy, right? And then uh, Adam, not only does he like me, he said, I have complete trust in my house and with my Amex. <laughs> and so these people are like, Matt sucks. He's just spending Adam's money frivolously. I'm like, do you think he'd let me do that? You think he'd trust, like, in other words, what, what I'm getting at, I'm not worried about you liking or disliking me. What I'm worried about is your future prospects. Like, your judgment barometer is freaking broken. Like, if you, like, I don't have anybody that doesn't like me. You know, I'm a really freaking nice guy. Now, I tell you, you know where I stand, for whatever that's worth. But uh, I just find it so funny in the comments of these new, clearly young males that aren't the brightest bulbs, you would think, man, maybe I should pay attention to this guy. He's kind of got this things, his stuff together. And no, 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 no. You suck. How, uh, you're just wasting Adam's money. Bought all this useless stuff that you're not even using. I'm like, we, did you, was I not walking around with that towel rack trying to find, like, I gotta put this thing somewhere. It's so awesome. You freaking idiots. Like, they're just, so dramatic, like dramatic, young, insecure men. Like, let, let me help you guys if you're watching this. Now, some of you, you're not going to be able to make comments because you're just annoying. If you make 57 un non punctuated, like run on paragraphs, I, I'm out. I can't. I don't want you clogging up the feed. So you're gone. So go make a new screen name. The way they really get my attention is to type in full sentences. Don't use, don't use abbreviations like PPL for people. Like you can't type out three more letters. Freaking idiots, that, that drives me crazy. And so you, we, we need to work on, I need to figure out how to start coaching these young men up on how to, uh, how, you know, if you're gonna have a judgment, how to judge properly. You know, just think about why I'm here Think about the decisions that are being made. Think about the scale of this project and the time that we're doing it in. I've had some people say, this is taking forever. I'm like, you idiots. This is taking like one-tenth of what it would normally take to do. Whoa, heads up. So, you know, I'm not trying to pick a fight here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a way. This is uh, Carpo Reset, by the way. Oh boy, this has not been screwed on. Shoot. Uh, oh, look. I was smart this time. I brought these out knowing I was gonna have to fix some stuff. 
So if you're a young man and you're having this initial like irrational reaction of, man, I really hate that Matt guy. First of all, why? Why? <laughs> For tell <laughs> all your favorite people like me, so maybe you should too. Um, but if you don't, that's, uh, that's okay. But we need to work on your, on your barometer here. Your judgment barometer is freaking broken, dude. This thing's still leaking. We need to help you uh, with your assessment. You're gonna need to develop that as time goes on in your life because you're gonna have a real tough time at your job, with bosses. If you're lucky, you'll have a boss like me. But you ain't never becoming the boss with that attitude. I can tell you that right now. I'm going on with this foam cannon here. Yo, what happens out here? is the, uh, you know, with the hard water, the uh, filters get clogged. This, this is coming from a different well than the well at the house, so it doesn't have the same, uh, same level of DI. What's up, guys? Or RO, I should say, not DI. Another way to combat that, so what I did here is I put probably 200 milliliters of soap. So I put more, uh, more uh, whatever this is called, reset in here than normal. Uh, you know what I think it is? I think there's probably a 1.1 millimeter orifice on here is why it's dribbling like that. So I'm overworking the machine. That would make sense, because look, I used almost none. I used almost none of the solution, so there's definitely a 1.1 on here. Somebody's gonna blow up the Krenzler. Because I don't have a bucket filler, I filled this up pre prior. This is why I always like to do the bucket afterward. So that's why I, the main reason I love bucket filler is because I can wait to uh, fill up my soap solution. Because when you put your soap in the bucket, bef you know, before you do the wheels and all of that, it, uh, it, the, especially when you have hard water like this, then the soap starts attacking the mineral content of the water. And then you end up with, uh, not so much suds, not so many suds. I gotta get my sentence structure right if I'm you know, yelling at these young men about uh, typing in full sentences and I'm speaking in Ebonics here. So, so yeah, the, these guys, like you just, you, you, gotta, you gotta stop for a second. I know your hormones are raging when you're you know, 18 years old. You've got to get your crap together and think, okay, wait a second here. So Matt's at this house. There's a lot going on. This is getting done really quickly. You know, Adam, the Adam has said, do you see Adam over at the house micromanaging anything? No, because I'm the guy. He you know, says, go do your thing, Matt. I've got work to do. And then he can show up and enjoy the whole thing at the end. Or Laurel, you know, Laurel is a freaking genius. Like, I don't like that lady because she tells people what to do. Well, that's her job. She came in, she was hired to be the expert. And then you got two experts going at it, me and her. Both of us are strong, what, what I would call, a, you know, what my coach would call a being right. So you got two being rights. And then I defer to her at the end when it comes to design. She defers to me when it comes to function. Although I did lose the stupid toilet paper or the, uh, you know, the towel rack over the toilet. But you have to think about 
what's going on in your brain, which clearly isn't a whole heck of a lot. So we need to get your brain checked out. You know, start to check yourself. Say, what's going on here? Why do I not like this guy? What's going on here? What, what, why do I think that he's wasting Adam's money? But wait a second, Adam is trusting this guy. And he, you think Adam's stu too stupid? Like you're the only one that sees that I'm wasting his money and Adam wouldn't see that? Yeah, I think that started when we said on the podcast how much he spent. Right, right. And they're misconstruing that it went over budget as we're blowing right. money. But Adam went over budget, not Matt. Yeah. I said, I, I made up the $150,000 budget, just made it up. I have no idea. Made it up. I said, I think it's going to cost one fifty. Remember Laurel looking at me saying, no freaking way. No way. I was like, well, I'm just throwing it out there. What, you know, what's the number? And so then Adam and, and Colette and Laurel and me, and as we go through the project, you know, we don't know exactly what it's going to cost. And so we, uh, you know, and then Adam makes some decisions. All right, you know what? I'm going to pay to have the wall smoothed. All right, we'll do the better. We were going to do cabinets that were quite a bit less expensive. Now, if we're going to do this, we need to do, do it right. Now, we're not going to go to, uh, you know, to plain and fancy level cabinets. Plain and fancy is a really high-end you know, cabinet manufacturer, Penville or something crazy like that. But we're going to do Showplace, which instead of costing 50 grand, cost 150 grand. Now, the part that you have to remember is that Austin and his team he got me cabinets at his cost, actually at Showplace's cost, and then he's doing the install for free. Where he normally, so I think the cabinets all total were like $75,000. Well, if he would have been selling those to somebody, it would have been double that. Um, and so the, but still, we were planning on spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in cabinets. But that wasn't, you know, Adam made a decision to say, you know what, I'd rather do it right. Let's just spend the 75 and get it done right. And we made those decisions on 50 different things. And so we, I had set another made up budget of 350. It's also different people when you, you see the HGTV shows and they talk about, well, I have a $350,000 budget. It's freaking nonsense. You know, people don't, most people don't have cash. They're just making up that budget based on what they've already done in the show. You know, the show, most of those shows were already shot. It was already done. And they come back after the fact and fill in the gaps. So, like for example, one of my friends, actually Laurel's daughter, was on one of those shows like uh, Property Virgins. And so they go and view the houses one of the houses they were touring on the show, they already bought. Like they already owned the house. And they're like, oh, look at, I kind of like their stuff on the countertop. Well, it was their stuff. And they were, had to pretend, had to act like, you know, this was one of the houses in contention. When they already bought it, were already in it, and already owned it, and already living in it. So most of those shows are freaking nonsense. And that's what people are conditioned to you know, to, to think that that's how it goes. And so we don't know what it's gonna cost. And then Adam's making decisions along the way. Now, one of the really confusing things for people, and I get this, is the Waterstone option. So Chris from Waterstone is an Adam LZ super fan. Chris is head of marketing for Waterstone. He reached out to me and said, hey, let's put Waterstone in the house. And I said, look, Chris, I mean, we're not doing that level of a remodel. You know, Waterstone is for houses that are $15 million, you know, really high-end projects. Or you would choose, like, if you really valued the kitchen faucet, maybe you'd pony up the six or eight grand to do a Waterstone endeavor because you really wanted that statement piece. But even in a two or three million dollar house, you're probably not gonna do the level of Waterstone that we did in this, in, in Adam's project. And the only reason we did that is that they had that new bathroom line. They wanted to launch it. Chris loves Adam LZ. He's grown to like Obsessed Garage as well, watching the videos. And so he said, you know, let's do it. Let's get you all the stuff. So we were able to get 
you know, 50, I think it was like $75,000 worth of stuff for like eight or 9,000, which would have been similar to had we gone and did like Newport Brass or some other, you know, nice, nice group of products, but again, not Waterstone level. And so the behind the scenes part that people are missing is all of that. Plus, you know, appliances. So I don't think Adam would have spent 20 grand on a fridge and freezer combo, but I'm able to get it at wholesale cost because I'm a Folger Milano, Milano dealer. And so when you add all this stuff up and then um, Laurel would have normally charged, she just charged them just enough to cover her, you know, travel expenses and a little bit of her time. And so, and then of course me and Mike. And the other thing you have to keep in mind, I probably spent, excluding me, 175 grand to be here, maybe. Salaries, travel, uh, all the time at OGHQ. Right. So we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of expense that I'm paying for in hopes that, you know, we garner a broader audience. And so when people say, I'm stealing Adam's money, we've got we've to get your barometer fixed, buddies. I'm washing his freaking cars. I make lots and lots of money because I freaking work like a psychopath and I built a really awesome brand and business. And then I have lots of awesome people that work for me and we've committed to this. Uh, and the reason we committed to this, Adam and Colette are my friends. It's a cool project. Um, we, you know, we, we um, when, when you're dealing with, you know, Adam also makes, as you might imagine, lots of money in order to be able to do this. We don't have to adhere to an exact budget and we can't go spend $2 million on it. We can't go spend 750 grand on it. There's a line, there's a limit, but we've made a lot of educated decisions along the way to say, hey, you know, let's do Waterstones on board to do this and give us a, you know, a, you know, a sweet deal. Let's, let's upgrade to that. You know, we can get better appliances and try some stuff out. Let's do that. Let's do the better cabinets. And let's, in order to do that, we really, we need East Side to help us out. Um, so Austin has donated his team. Chris from Service Plumbing did that whole freaking house for nothing, zero. Um, you know, that's probably $30,000, $40,000 worth of plumbing done to the house. No one, I, all I have to say is no one's getting screwed here. And if you think so, your, your barometer is jacked up, bro. Trust me, your barometer needs some adjusting. And so what makes me unlikable is that comment of your barometer's jacked. That's not my fault, that's your fault. I'm just telling you what, what is so. Stop blaming me for your problems. Now, the other thing you have to understand, you know, when Adam and I are talking about this project and you know, reaching limits, is that you know, we actually have, you now he has a much bigger audience than I do, but we, ha we have similar size you know, revenue businesses, similar size amount of employees and stuff. Um, we pay taxes on millions of dollars of income, so technically we make millions of dollars, but almost every penny of that, in fact, oftentimes more than that, goes back into the darn thing. So the goal is someday all of this pays off, and you get cars like this, which is part of the business as well, which is a real, real awesome byproduct. But um, the reason why we can't just say, you know, let's spend $750,000 on the house is, that's money that can't be allocated to hiring a new employee or developing a new product or taking another trip or something like that. And so we have to, we have to draw the line somewhere. And that's why we were attempting to sort of draw a line on a budget. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, it matters how much, you know, things cost when you're, you know, growing, when you're building something. But, 
you can also hopefully you hopefully you're you're t you're able to at some point in your life to be able to make that decision. You know, I'd like to. I really value this GT3. I've got to pay extra for paint to sample on the GT3. I mean, I think all of our life's goal would be to be able to make that decision and say, you know what, I really don't want to spend 15 grand on this special color, but I know I'm really going to enjoy that. I know I'm really going to value it, and so I'm going to do it. Even though I might need to make some sacrifices elsewhere. And then the ultimate goal is to be like one of those YouTube dudes who, you know, is buying, they're buying Bugattis and crap like that. That would be cool, you know. And so I do understand just as I can't, what's that guy's name, like Misha Shobi and the guy in, you know what I'm talking about? The guy in Miami who has like every Wyra and, and he has like, you know, a million people following him and I guess he, you know, is a motivational speaker, some nonsense like that. Manny Koshman. Yeah, Manny Koshman, that guy, you know. I think he's in uh, Los Angeles or something. Is he? Yeah, and he's, uh, he probably has a place in Miami too. Yeah. But he, you know, maybe he's a real, a real estate developer or something like that or who knows. But um, we all aspire to be that guy where you can just buy whatever you want whenever you want. But it's just as, I, I get that it's just as hard for me to relate to him as it is for you to relate to Adam or me. But I don't hate him. I think, you know, that'd be super cool to be able to do what, what a guy like that's able to do. I mean, could you imagine having a jet where you can just jump on and go wherever you want? Having a, you know, garage where where um, everything is sent by, by the way, he doesn't wash his cars. I'm washing somebody else's car for gosh sake to try to survive. So I don't know where I'm going with this. Just trying to help you young guys out. And um, if, you're, if your snap judgment is that I'm screwing Adam somehow, you've lost your mind and we need to, we need to recalibrate your, uh, your brain. It's a whole lot of North Carolina right there. A whole lot of Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee coming out of the front bumper there. 992 is you gotta make a, an effort to blow out all those leaves every so often. Otherwise your radiators get all clogged up. So this is OG drying aid. The new stainless tips I believe are on the water. Someone was asking me uh, in the comments the other day about am I ready to abandon the, uh, the press sauce? No, they're just starting to get good. You just have, and I, I knew this going in, it's taken a lot longer than I'd hoped, but you have to remember, Germans don't move at the pace that Americans move. They're very deliberate, they're very specific, they calculate, they, uh, they take a while. And so I knew it was gonna take a while, but I didn't think it would take me you know, three years to get it done, but we're getting really close to having the exact sprayer experience that I've been wanting forever. It ain't gonna be cheap. It's gonna be very Waterstone-like, so I'm ready for the complaining to start. I don't care. I want them for, for me, and I know that many of you will want them too. They're already the best bottles that exist. You just have to deal with some of the quirks. This car is pretty freaking awesome. So we talked about this on the podcast with Adam about, you know, would he keep this car if he got, you know, when he gets his 992 GT3 RS? And the answer is, depends on what cash flow looks like when you're when it's time to pay the bill. That's what happens when you're a business owner. Depending on what project is going on, what employee needs to be hired, all that kind of stuff, makes your decision on what you get to do. And sometimes you have to 
forego your own personal desires for the greater good of the brand or the company or hopefully when we're what was that guy's name Misha when we're his age we can make the same decisions that he's making which is no compromise all awesome all the time I don't like baby blue, but I do like the gray in this, this blue, the gray hue to it. So we do still have some bugs left over, so I'm gonna hit this with a little bit heavier drying aid, so I have some good lubrication on the PPF here. See, like here. Another bug down here. And that's probably a leaf. So now is when I'll make sure that everything comes off. This PPF looks good, and he's had the car in the mountains a couple of times with it. Windshield, you can tell the windshield's taking some pretty heavy impact. And yet the PPF is going to self healed up to be pretty decent shape even after riding bumper to bumper in the mountains, you know, getting pelted by rocks and stuff. This is uh, Expel Ultimate. That's what Ryan uses. Oh yeah, some roughness there from the getting beaten up. So that's why 10 year warranties on PPF is fricking nonsense. You're gonna have to pull this PPF off a year from now and redo it. Same thing with coatings. It's a bunch of nonsense. It's actually getting kind of hot. I am really excited to get back to life and routine. It's really hard to stay on track out here. So I'm going home this weekend because the rag company boys are coming into town. And then uh, I'll be back until we're done. Yeah, the tearaway turned to yellow a little bit. You don't normally see expel. That doesn't normally happen to it. So what Ryan does this is, this is all one big piece, all the way down here, all the way down there is one big piece of PPF. And so what we do is he puts a thicker tearaway piece here from the, uh, I think from the track line of Expel. But it's turned to yellow. Not starting to, it is yellow. I wonder if it's because the track line stuff doesn't hold up as well to UV. Maybe it's just purely about protection, I'll have to ask them. So if you're gentle and careful, you, we can pull that tear away off and replace it without having to replace the big piece of PPF that's underneath it. Look at how good the trim looks. This car has 3,300 miles on it. Mine has 300 miles on it. Gosh, I can't, I can't wait to drive mine. It took a little hit there. No, we didn't do PPF on the whole car. So that might be a recommendation for you all. If you're gonna do a PPF, make sure you do the, the wing, because the wing pops up when you're at speed. You get hit by something. Oh, I got something really cool to show you in the passenger seat here in a minute. It's really freaking cool. So you better hang on to the end of the video if you want to see it. Ooh, that's, uh, that's iron. In between the PPF layers, it looks like. Because, I mean, I think these are aluminum, I would think, so that, yeah, the fenders are definitely aluminum on this, so they're not gonna rust. Look at that big rust spot. There must be a piece of iron in between the two PPF layers or underneath the PPF. I mean, we deconned it. 
So yeah, actually, oh, you know what? These are the factory. This isn't the tearaway. That's right, he only PPF the high impact areas. Ah, that makes more sense. So, we didn't take these off. This is the factory piece. So that's iron in between the factory piece, well, when they put it on. Yep. So this is not Expel, it's probably 3M. That makes more sense, because I've never seen Expel do that. Maybe old, old Expel, but not, not new stuff. Certainly not Expel Ultimate. So this car has the Cognac interior. Mine has Cohiba. So mine's a little darker, this one's a little lighter. This was my original choice, was to do the Cognac, which I think is freaking sweet looking. But then, and then this goofy crap is, I think the dealership does that. Let's put the wing up. So if this doesn't help you, young guys, with your judgment barometer, you'll, that's how you'll know it's jacked up. If you weren't immediately thinking, man, this is not Matt's car. Why is he putting the wing up to clean under it? Because it's my friend, it's the right thing to do, and I don't frickin' cut corners. So hopefully that helps with your, uh, if you weren't thinking that immediately, then we got work to do on your judgment. It's really sad, my, I gotta change the oil on my car. <laughs> and it's, you know, I got the service indicator. And I have 300 miles on it. I do want my touring to become sort of a collector for me. So, by, I'm sort of being forced into it becoming one. Well, yeah, I did. I would have sold it if he ponied up the cash. It wasn't the right timing for him. Here it is, people. Check it out. This is our first packaged product. So, the concept is that, you know, we use shop towels, we use paper towel rolls, and uh, the rag company kind of came up with this idea where it's a rip, a rip away microfiber. And then we put it in this cool box that Bryce designed, it's super sick. And so we're also designing a really cool paper towel holder or microfiber towel holder. Uh, and so the concept is these tear away, you can see the perforation line. And then these are actually, I think these are still a, a high quality 70-30 towel that um, you can, uh, use for you know whatever purpose and they're washable and reusable and so the way i used been, have been using them in my sample kits is i uh i'll tear a towel off you know wipe something off with it you could use it on the paint if you wanted to they're good enough but really i'm using them for around the shop and then i'll throw it in laundry wash it and then i have a like I have an old batch new batch kind of thing and so the old the old batch gets tossed into a different bin and then I'll reuse them. And then if I have something really nasty I need to clean up, I'll use it and then throw it away. Like if I was cleaning off the tires or something like that. Cleaning off some oil from the ground. But I think a uh, rag company calls them ripping rags or something. But they allowed us to private label our own version of it. Super cool. So coming to the store very soon. Looks pretty good. Trevor's been doing a good job here. If he wasn't, then this would have been all dirty. So Trevor's Mike's son. Trevor works for us, but on the weekends, he works for Adam, maintaining the cars, you know, washing. You know, and Adam has frickin' 50 cars, so 
It could almost be a full-time job. All right, let's dress the tires. We're done so. I don't have any clean towel. I'm gonna have to pull this thing forward. There's too much water. It's better. I'll be able to get a better dressed tire. Shoot, and the thing fall on the bottom. God dang it, freaking idiots. I don't have what I need to pull the, the straw out. That's a couple. I'll wipe the excess off right after I finish these. I'm surprised the water in the wash bay here it's got to be filtered because I haven't found it to be much of a water spotting issue. All right, people, that's a wrap. This car's looking pretty good. As usual, he's on his own on his interior. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I gotta go pull the straw out of this bottle, get it back on. Anyway, that's a wrap on the old wash and talk. We'll try to do our next week drift and wash or drift and talk or something or other on the cream 240. And that'll be our uh, culmination of this project. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.